Well, I just got an email from the blog over at House, and it's their top 10 kitchens of 2022 so far. Now, if you're unfamiliar with House, it's effectively like fancy Pinterest. You can go and you can get all the inspiration you want, but there's also a place to talk to professionals or even hire professionals, as well as an area to shop, kind of an all-in-one platform. But back to those 10 kitchens. What it is is essentially the top 10 saved photos of the last three or four months, and we're gonna take a look at what is trending right now. Diving right into number 10 is an airy and open white and wood kitchen. Now this color palette or this tonal palette is really popular right now. In fact, I also just finished up a design for a client falling right into the same category. It's hard to go wrong with this white and wood tone palette because it really creates an inviting space. What I really liked about this project is the fact they used a dividing wall to create a butler's pantry behind the range. This is a really great example of breaking up an overly large space into different areas while still keeping it quite functional. By putting in that dividing wall and creating that pseudo butler's pantry back there, you almost double the effective storage you can fit in that area. And the best part, it really doesn't impact the front of the kitchen at all, and it almost creates somewhat of a focal point and a little bit of intrigue about what's around those corners. The project that comes in at number nine is all about unique storage. And finally, we're starting to see this move towards the forefront of kitchen design. It's about time we start including cabinets that work for us instead of the other way around. This particular photo is highlighted by the cookie sheet or cutting board storage area that pulls out making for easy access. This is something we have to think about when we're planning our kitchens. We need to think about what we currently own and what is the best way to store it that works for us. When you take a look at the kitchen as a whole, so you dig a little deeper into the design, you find that that cabinet is in a really great position. It's easily accessible for both prepping and working at the island while still staying nice and close to the range. Better yet, it's kind of out of the way from the main kitchen area, so if you are pulling that out, you're not interrupting somebody else while they're working. I'm also really digging that green and wood combo. Another wood and white kitchen comes in at number eight, and there's a few things I noticed about this space right off the bat. They weren't afraid to keep the sink out of the island. They had space at the back wall, and that entire area creates a nice symmetrical focal point to anchor the whole kitchen. I've said in the past how I'm a big fan of leaving the island open and free of appliances and sinks if at all possible. They did a great job in this kitchen. It's a nice big island simply just for space to work at. This kitchen is also another great example of breaking up cabinet hardware. Knobs on the easier door cabinets and pulls are used anywhere you need a little more strength, a little more oomph, if you will, to open the cabinet. Moving along to number seven is this felt gray kitchen. Now, right off the bat, the first thing I noticed is these skinny shaker cabinets, which helps give it a little bit of uniqueness, something different from just another gray kitchen. Now, I'm not normally a fan of all gray kitchens. They typically lack a little personality, character. There's no real vibe to the overall space. However, when I dove into this project a little bit more, there is some coolness when you get into it. First is the accent wall on the backside of the peninsula. I like how they used a tile that helps blend the floor, the countertops, and the cabinets together. It also really gives some pop to the space that was otherwise missing. Finally, the wood open shelves really add that touch of warmth that is needed in these spaces. I also like that they used open shelving here over the peninsula as opposed to wall cabinets for a few reasons. First of all, if you're sitting at that peninsula, you don't have this cabinet lingering right in your face now. You have a somewhat shallower open shelf, tends to be a little more airy, less boxy, less in your face. Second of all, those cabinets tend to be somewhat awkward to access, especially if they're double doored in nature, that kind of standard opening style, because now you're sort of reaching around the one door to access everything you've stored inside. And number six, it is a more traditional kitchen, one they are calling Coastal Classic. Now, when I look at this kitchen, the first thing I think is just, it's timeless. It's one of those kitchens that is always gonna look in style and always going to look nice. That blue and white cabinet combo always seems to stay relevant. And as much as some people don't like them, subway tiles don't seem to be going anywhere either. Though in this particular kitchen, I like the fact they used a longer, skinnier version of the tile instead of that classic three by six we all think of when we think subway tiles. I think one of the big takeaways about this particular project is that they've chosen an aesthetic and they've really leaned into it. There's nothing wishy-washy about the space. Everything used in it points to a similar design style. Although maybe not my style, the pendants blend in really well with the ornate range hood, and even the faucet carries a similar style. This is definitely something we can all take away when we're designing our own spaces. Really lean into your preferred design style. So pull from all the different layers in the kitchen, whether it's your cabinet color or style, your countertops, your hardware, your lighting, faucet, 
all of those different layers will help build a cohesive design. Another wood and white kitchen comes in at number five. I think we're starting to see a trend here. Space isn't huge like some of the others, but it is fresh looking. It's a well done kitchen. And the focal point here has to be the full slabs for the countertop and backsplash that run right to the ceiling. Now, all of you white kitchen haters out there are really gonna love the next kitchen that comes in at number four because it's an all white kitchen. It's light and airy, and I like that they've brought in some different textures for the island seating. I like the mixed metals from the stainless steel appliances to the faucet to the black hardware. Although I'm going to side with the white kitchen haters on this, it's a little boring. I think the space is lacking a focal point, lacking some definition. It's definitely lacking personality and character. And I think it's just a lot of white with a little bit of wood and a little bit of glass. Going with some pendant lighting that had a little bit more of a visual impact, maybe some black iron to it or black metal to it as opposed to just glass, or even a bold tile for the backsplash could have been all this kitchen needed. Now that being said, I do understand the goal of the kitchen. They were looking for that light and airy feel, and I think they do have that. But it's a lot of white. Even the walls and trim in the back room appear to be white. Moving on from open and airy and all white, we have a bold walnut kitchen at number three. Now, before I bring up this kitchen, there's one thing I want to mention. One of the things I really liked about this space is that they pulled from their surroundings. They pulled from the environment outside of the home. So this particular kitchen is in Colorado and they leaned into that wood, that deep wood tone of walnut that reminds you of the forests and the trees. They have chunky black hardware in there that really reminds you of mountains and rock and thick, bold elements. In addition, unlike the last kitchen, there's also a statement pendant over the island which catches your attention right away. It's also a great layout, focusing on the working side of the island with easy access to all of the kitchen zones while keeping the cook from needing to run circles around that big island. The only thing I'm not entirely sure of in this kitchen is the black backsplash at the back of the kitchen. I can't really decide if I like it, if I don't like it, or it's, it's just kind of there. The one thing I will say for sure though is it blends in with the rest of the design, it goes along with that theme, so they did a really good job of pulling that all together. Again, pulling all of those layers and leaning into the overall design. So we're hitting the brakes on those bold wood and black elements. We're going to pull a 180 as we move into kitchen number two, which is a bright and beachy feel. Once again, we see a smattering of mixed metals throughout the space, something that is really on trend right now. They also brought a pop of color into the space with that touch of blue on the island. I also like that it's a bit of a nod to the fact that this is an oceanside home and it draws in from the water that inspiration outdoors. Now what I really liked about this kitchen was the emphasis on lighting. They did a great job including a ton of windows bringing in that natural light. On top of that they used sconces and pendants and ceiling lights to really layer the different lighting styles throughout the space making it a room you could probably work comfortably in no matter what time of day it was. Last thing I'll mention about this kitchen is that I find it interesting they added seating to both the island as well as the peninsula. It's great if you're constantly seating a large gathering or constantly having lots of people around. However, the seating of the island makes the fridge in somewhat of an awkward spot when you're preparing food, as now you're forced to walk around that seating area as opposed to just across the kitchen. Finally, we're at number one, it's just, I love this kitchen. It's just a kitchen that you feel like it's giving you a hug if you were to walk into it. It's just these warm, cozy vibes all over. Once again, they pulled from the surrounding environment of the old Massachusetts stone homes with the exposed stone wall around the range. I like the windows extending right down to the countertop on the sink wall. This is something that really forces your eye beyond just the kitchen. The space is also a great example of taking stock of your cabinet needs and staying somewhat minimalistic and only including storage for what you actually have. The wood and black work wonderfully as accents against the fresh white cabinets and walls. Overall, I'm a huge fan of that kitchen and that design. I think there's a lot of little elements that can give you inspiration when you want to pull together that warm and cozy feel in your own kitchen. So a few big takeaways from all of those 10 spaces. One, shaker cabinets are really dominating the cabinet front, if you will, with only two of those kitchens going in another direction. White isn't going anywhere anytime soon, as pretty well every kitchen, except the gray one, had white cabinets included. Wood is in in a big way to get that warm and cozy feel, as long as it's not that golden oak color from a few decades ago. There was not a single ultra-modern slab-style kitchen in any of the top 10 saved photos, 
And finally, I think seating is still a really big, important element for most people when it comes to their kitchen space. Well, there it is, a bit of a different take on the current kitchen trends out there right now. Just breaking down the top 10 photos, what other kitchen designers are doing, what they're putting together for these spaces, it can give you some inspiration for your own. So I'd love to know, what did you like about these spaces? Or maybe what did you dislike about some of them? And more importantly, which was your favorite kitchen of the bunch? Thanks a ton for joining me this week. It's always a pleasure discussing kitchen design with you. Until next time, bye-bye.